first live game of the year and what a game to have with Dublin um, very strong up front uh, uh, John Con Callaghan Dean Rock uh, Car- Carmer Costello Kieran Kilkenny appear to be all playing um, Dublin defensively the names are not that big the earlier results you see have a big bearing I think for Cork to have a chance a real chance of qualifying we need to win this game but then if you want to compete at top level you need to be taking on the Dublins in the league you are at home you need to win your home games We'll see what happens. Cock of a bit of win in the first half. Beautiful day, big crowd here. As expected, uh, Padua Kofik Bond who's come into the team is starting in midfield with Tom Lehav, Lehif playing at right half forward and Cock and Brian O'Driscoll on the attack, right footed. We've seen the direct ball inside has gone in to Chris Oak Jones in the top of the left roll. There's a run by Sean Potter off the fast side. Lovely skill by Chris Oak Jones as he sends it across. The Dublin goalkeeper David O'Hanlon is underneath it, clawed it out from underneath his crossbar and won a free out in the process and has given the ball out the wing as Dublin drive on now. It's no score a piece in the opening 30 seconds but we could have had a score very very on, early on there Tom Nehiff kicking the ball infield with Dublin on the attack fast direct stuff inside plenty of talent plenty of all and medicine this inside forward line for Dublin this is Como Costello he's operating with 13 in his back playing in the left corner but he's ballooned the ball away over to the right hand side of the post and wide so Tommy Walsh and Luke Fahey came into the Cork team in Kildare a few weeks ago retained their places remember Cork scored 214 on that day only conceded 7 points and went 27 minutes without any score being conceded they like to keep it tight probably here John Fenton daily early on yeah uh, J- uh, John you may have been given slightly wrong information at start he's actually, Michael Fitzsimons is actually playing at fullback I think since McMahon, the number three named on the programme, is not playing. So Fitzsimons is playing, but Murchin isn't. These are championship players who are looking at their important kick out for Cork. Well, this is the team we were given here by Dublin that Fitzsimons and Murchin weren't playing and that uh, McMahon was playing, but uh, that looks like maybe there's a, a slight change down there. Cork with a free from the middle of the field, down the right wing to Owen Max Sweeney, trying to uh, take on Tom Lehiff there as he goes down into the top of the right roll. Back he gives it towards uh, uh, Stephen Sherlock, the leading scorer for Cork. 14 points he scored the first day against Mead, out to Brian O'Driscoll, who had a very good day in Newbridge a couple of weeks ago with three points on play after being recalled, of course, to the Cork squad this season. He gives it back towards the team captain, uh, Brian Holly. The Cork full forward line playing keep ball at the moment it's back out to Owen Max Sweeney and out to a Brian O'Driscoll again Brian O'Driscoll will get all the way back towards 60-65 out from his own goal towards Roy Maguire the centre back and he'll come into the line again picks it up now in the right half forward position fist the ball back a few metres to Tommy Walsh Tommy Walsh very solid game in the number 4 jersey the last day lots of cock players handling the ball including Daniel Amani of course part of that Sigerson Cup team during the week that won now towards Ian Maguire trying to charge forward here he's about 45 out from goal it's good possession from Cork they're not going particularly anywhere to penetrate Dublin at the moment Dublin well set up in defence we saw this from Cork and Kildare where they were very watertight were very disciplined in defence in the opening half of the game they've swung the ball across now laterally towards Tommy Walsh who's 65 metres out from goal gives the ball back towards Luke Fahey that solid game for the Valencolic man at right half back the last day to Rory Maguire his centre back there's about 14-15 Cork players now have touched the ball successively but they're not hunting Dublin in fact they're going backwards Rory Maguire back now about 30 out from his own goal there's only Michal Ma- Michal e. Martin behind him comes again to Brian O'Driscoll right half back he's now at the moment Tommy Walsh again towards uh, Ian Maguire Michal Martin might like a touch he's 30 metres out from goal but it goes across towards uh, Maguire and Tommy Walsh involved in it now Sean Potter trying to make a bust through if he can receive the ball but Cock and Colmar Callan elect to go towards the right wing towards Luke Fahey and Luke Fahey came to try and get the ball he was fouled by the Dublin man uh, Tom Lehiff so that's going to be a, a free end what do you make of that long period of Cork possession John Fenton Daly yeah well Dublin are very patient and I suppose Cork has to be as patient John they're working the ball across but you know when you have the wind you do feel obliged to use it there was a couple of times there Cork appeared to be playing like an offside line and there was nobody playing for the inside ball you always have to have one guy inside and you watch Conor Callan or Dean Rock there will always be an inside uh, player for that kind of ball that option and Cork didn't have that option so they've held the ball well but so far they haven't hurt Dublin this freeze on the ground from Stephen Sherlock it's on the right hand side here at uh, near 10 metres in from the near touchline and it is scorable he probably trying to kick it with a, kick, kick it from left to right John maybe try and get a curl on it uh, but it is scorable but it's difficult 
He scored 18 points so far. He hit it, as John said, from left to right, but he hasn't managed to execute that skill. A difficult one that it was on the ground. 45 out from goal. It's gone well wide to the left, and it's going to be a, a kick out to the uh, Dublin goalkeeper, David O'Hanlon. 23 year old netmonder who's won a National Football League medal, right footed. He kicks the ball into the middle of the field. Colm Callan was the cockman, tried to come to meet it, but it was brought down. There's going to be a free for Dublin after Nice Scully, the man with the red boots wearing the number 10 jersey, climbed highest there and won the ball. Familiar names on this Dublin team particularly in the attack. It's the same six attackers that started the last day in the win. Very convincing win against Limerick as it turned out. Now on the attack is one of those at the far side. Kieran Kilkenny back inside it goes towards, uh, it looks like Tom Lehiff. Uh, Brian Fenton who's got two goals in this uh, champion, in this league season so far. One in both games so he's a man that Cock need to watch. He was fouled as he went through and there's going to be the opportunity uh, for Dean Rock to try and open the account for Dublin out of his hands he's going to take it about 25 metres out from the goal it's the City goal and remember in the first half there's a bit of a breeze coming from the City side into the face now of the Dublin free taker so let's see what he can do with it as we say hello to young Ali Roach who's a mascot but particularly to his granddad Dick Welsh and Belly Cotton who's a very proud granddad because Ali was a, a mascot here the ball goes from uh, Dean Rock has gone in and it's between the posts so a nice sprinkling of applause for that Dublin score, the opening one of the day. Yes, a number of mascots lined out with cock before the start of the game. Very proud granddad in Ballycotton, Dick Welsh, met his family coming in here. They were delighted to have Ollie down there with the Cork players, and particularly uh, Brian Holly at the start of the game. Cork, uh, no score, doubling a point after six minutes. Remember, we went seven minutes in Kiltair without anybody scoring. Daniel O'Mahony, he was busy as well during the week, along, of course, with Morris Shanley in that, in that Sigerson Cup success. Across to Matty Taylor involved in the movement, to Rowan McGrath, back to Tommy Walsh again, who escapes out towards the left hand side of the fence. Still 45 inside his own half of the field, so doubling with everybody at the moment behind that. 45 metre line and they're quite content to see Cork with the ball playing it laterally across the field they lead by a point and no score Cork with two points on the board remember from their winning kill there but nothing from a disappointing finale against Mead first day out so this is a big match for them here if they could get their first home win Brian O'Driscoll in possession back towards Daniel O'Mani and O'Mani as he came in field was fouled and that's, that's going to be a free is there a lack of, is there a lack of options there for, from Cork going forward John? Yeah well Dublin the difference here with Dublin and albeit now they're missing some key men all so, but Dublin will be in your face and if there's anything uh, in the line of anything that's not as good as the 70 or 80% ball Dublin could turn you over and they've already done it Daniel O'Mahony was even lucky there that he got that free it was marginal enough but remember they have the win John and there's no ball going up but now there's a break on here for Ian Maguire gives it to the Tladdy Kilty man Mara Shanley he advances a couple of steps and then inside to Ian Maguire who breaks a couple of challenges through a, a couple of uh, Dublin players and at the far side Stephen Sherlock twisting and turning 45 out from goal he's a long way out to try something gives it to Sean Poulter the goal scorer the last day racing across the 45 metre line a busy bee of course as he gives it now uh, to Brian Holly right for it he kicks it uh, it's a super point for Brian Holly he was quite here against Mead but that's a wonderful score after he having a fine outing with four points in Newbridge that's a settling score and very well taken by the team captain yeah if they can feed him Bob we know Sherlock is our main scorer but Brian Hurley will score them all day if the chance comes and it was good to see that because we hadn't seen much direct ball by Dublin by Cork early on that was a short kick out to uh, Lehiff and um, Cork have won it back Cork have turned it over with Brian Holly down the line they give it to Chris Oak Jones he sends the ball inside a few metres back it goes to Sherlock again it'll be difficult to try and send this one around with the right foot it tails well right of the post and wide and remains Cork a point Dublin a point and Cork Sports Sunday and C103 after 8 minutes yeah well to the what to try from uh, Sherlock he hasn't really um, he hasn't really been on target in his first few balls the, the, the game has become as you know very much now like basketball teams are to drop back way back behind the half back line uh, but the difference with Dublin and you see it there now already John that inside ball they will use an inside you see the two inside forwards and there's the ball coming Keane Murphy to John Small and Small sent it inside again it's a great delivery inside to Connor Callan he was tumbled on is the referee going to give that outside the big parallelogram he is indeed it was a fast direct ball it involved Keane Murphy and John Small coming out of the fence and then when Small kicked the ball inside the runner was inside he got clean possession Connor Callan he was held just on the angle of the X on, on the angle of the parallelogram so it's going to be a tap over point really uh, for Dean Rock to make it 2-1 to one for Dublin yeah and this is the modern advantage rule John this is one of the great benefits when you uh, punish the defending team for fouling he was uh, given the advantage and you know what he could have got the goal 
Uh, he was penalised in the area after that, but the course the free comes back for the advantage to here. Dean Rock will kick this over the bar. Dublin lead 2 1. The big difference so far, John. Cork are not providing that inside ball. They don't have that inside channel. They don't have Sherlock or Brian Hurley or Chris Oak Jones, any one of them inside for that inside ball. Watch Dublin, they will do that all day. And just to clarify that Dublin change again as we were given that uh, Sean McMahon was playing and Fitzsimons was and Fitzsimons is actually playing and McMahon is and just to clarify that again uh, for any of our listeners trying to clarify the shape of that Dublin defence but the players coming in were Pado or Coffey Bon and Darren New coming into the Dublin defence they're on the attack though at the far side this is dangerous and it is uh, Niall Scully who lays the ball off a chance for Dean Rock he's got two already doesn't kick this one though at the far side he gives the ball out right Dublin just playing a bit keep ball themselves now as they go back to Lee Gannon the right half back and he sends the ball across towards the left hand side of the half forward line where Carmo Costello with a fine match against Kildare and Croke Park in the opening game scored four points that day sends it into the corners there an angle for Shotty or maybe not Dublin trying to get the shooters within range Kieran Kilkenny back and goes out again towards the corner just walking the ball patiently Dublin who lead by two points to one back towards Lee Gannon the right half back who started all this and into uh, Brian Fenton Brian is 45 out from goals this sends the ball forward a bit of a change of gear now by Dublin they're trying to set up Conor Callan inside the D for a shot plenty of cock judges around them they were disciplined as I said the last day and they're very disciplined they've won a clean ball back here and Matty Taylor gallops out of the fence and now there's a chance of the counter attack with Tommy Walsh ran into a bit of heavy traffic did well to withstand a couple of challenges and the ball comes out to Ian Maguire right inside the midfield now the towering St. Fitbars man goes down to give it to the knock the green man Owen Max Sweeney nice footwork by him back he gives it to Maguire close to the sideline over here on the southern stand side of the field lovely play between Maguire and Max Sweeney Max Sweeney is way inside the 45 metre line trying to get out to the right foot looks at the goal post that's a fine score the score of the match so far Dublin 2 Cork 2 lovely creation and great walk and great persistence by Max Sweeney and Maguire to walk that ball to the scoring angle yeah lovely walk by Ian Maguire and on Max Sweeney and look I was urging one to kick that because he scored him all day and he generally doesn't do it at this level he maybe doesn't have the confidence but he suddenly hit that on the button from inside to from outside to win great score and they'll need plenty of them John if they to stay in this game because when Dublin have the wind they'll have a bigger range at the moment they'll have to work the ball around um around the the uh, the verges on left and right because out, out of range against that wind yes Tom Lehiff busting forward for Dublin trying to set up an opportunity Kieran Kilkenny a lovely sidestep by him onto the left boot across the keeper and Michal Ma- Michal A. Martin just watched it go wide at the far side it was the kind of that dipping delivery which could have been dangerous but went away to the far left of his angle thankfully and he can restart the game with a very short kick towards Luke Fahey just a chip ball to get Fahey in possession 45 out from goal Fahey looks forward and decides to accelerate a bit he's advanced as far as halfway now Cock going forward with more pace in this attack this is Colmore Callan driving forward inside towards Brian Holly. can he beat his man for it out in the top of the right position Chris Oak Jones makes a great run inside goal opportunity for Chris Oak Jones took a step one way then the other and then it was smothered by the goalkeeper David O'Hanlon Chris Oak Jones just maybe hesitated a fraction too long the referee says the ball was picked off the ground so it's going to be a free in goalkeeper being penalised there he was outside the small square when he picked the ball up to gather possession yeah. it's going to be a tap over point on the 13 metre line but Chris O. Jones just hesitated ever so slightly when he got the ball and the goal chance was gone he did I suppose for Chris O. Jones I mean we've watched him at club level he's lethal uh, from that range or from any close range and really that should have been a goal but the keeper did touch it on the ground this referee so far has done very very well I can tell you he spotted it he touched it on the ground he waited for the event to come back to Cork and then he called it back to give the free remember John if he if he had um, if he sorry excuse me let that go that was a good score for Cork one point lead but remember 13 minutes gone and they have the win behind him Seamus Mulhair incidentally is the match referee from County Lee so that ball tapped over the bar by Brian Hurley three points to two now Cork lead Dublin here and what is a breezy and cloudy Parky Creeve the David O'Hanlon kick goes over towards the right corner back position as Dublin will build up again as I said Fitzsimons back there now in defence after Sean McMahon had played two decent games in the full back position Tom Lehiff involved in the movement and Dublin bring it out the field and suddenly they're within 45 metres of the Cork goal on the River Lee side of the ground up into the top of the right position Cork 3 Dublin 2 at the moment Dublin trying to get a levelling score ball is recycled back out the field again Lehiff has got to get it now he's 45 out from goal his midfield partner just his lateral turn Brian Fenton instead he goes inside 
chance for Dublin smothered there the Dublin man as he went through whistle has been sound that's going to be a free in and that should be a leveling score again there's just a pattern point for point at the moment Dean Rock and Brian Hulley have got some handy points there's going to be a talking to I think as well uh, the referee we were praising well on Seamus Mulhair the leash man going to award I think with Ian Maguire at this stage and maybe there could be a card yeah, there card. is indeed a yellow card for the cock man for that foul yeah I have to say John the first decision I've seen I don't agree with that at all uh, if it is for the so called foul and uh, the defender held his ground the player played straight into him I actually would have given no free there but there you go he's have to give it to Dean Rock and of course they'll score those all day level the game but that wind is getting stronger as the first half goes um, you feel that when Dublin get possession up front with any range they're going to get a lot of scores Cork need to get inside ball they've got a couple of them there now in the last couple of minutes to Brian Hurley and they need to channel that ball in more directly more often Yes, a handy free for 32 year old Rock, of course, who won a Sigerson with DCU back in 2012. Mentioned that this week, of course. I'm looking at the cock bench, and we look the likes of Fionn Holly here and Mark Cronin, who won, of course, with UCC during the week. There could be options. Push there from the a kick out to the far side. Mihaly and Martin went long, so it's going to be a free for cock. Left inside the midfield, Ian Maguire standing over two or three metres in from the River Lee side of the ground, and cock will go back and go cross field, and they will build through the hands of Rory Maguire. Now he toe taps the ball and moves towards midfield the big towering centre back who started the previous two matches and the number six jersey the uh, Castle Haven man in midfield to Luke Fahey and Cork transferred the ball to Colmore Call- uh, to Owen Max Sweeney uh, Colmore Callan down the line towards Brian O'Driscoll and back they give it to Rory Maguire Maguire comes forward again involved in this movement a few times to Chris Oak Jones who had that goal chance a few moments ago wonder how important will that be Brian O'Driscoll has it now he looks lively though Chris Oak Jones at the opening stage of this game Brian O'Driscoll runs through now 45 out from goal can cock again with the shooting range Owen McSweeney a hand time to try and swing the leg at it Roy Maguire up again tries to tread the ball through great play again for Brian Holly to seek it out and he beat two players Brian Holly to win that ball it was a great foot pass by Rory Maguire true to his club mate and really in a sense when the ball was going through you'd fancy Brian Holly maybe had no right to win it but he got there ahead of two Dublin players kicked it brilliantly 4-3 to three for Cork yeah and the great thing John uh, here is that for once it's not all the, the, the Stephen Sherlock show there are other players involved that's Brian Holly's second one of those and that's very important to see um Dublin now are being put under a bit of pressure coming out but Dublin are going to be lethal up front Conor Callan's one of the best forwards in the country at any given time probably would have won the All-Ireland last year if he was fit and we haven't really seen them yet because they haven't had enough possession Dublin are out though with Keane Murphy setting up Kieran Kilkenny over towards the top of the left position after the short kick out here's a chance for Conor Callan into the right boot made the angle it was a point all the way you'd have to say from the cooler man the minute he ran in along the 20 metre line there was only going to be a one outcome that was going to result in a white flag and that has squared the match after 17 first half minutes you had Cox Sports Sunday and C103 it's the third day of the Alliance Football League remember a big win for Derry yesterday has put them at the head of the group with 6 points from 6 here are Cox looking to try and get their second win Matty Taylor Dublin remember on 4 will join Derry at the top of the table if they win the Cockman was tripped as he ran through there trying to make the overlap at the far side maybe just a clash of legs there Tommy Walsh was going one way the Dublin player was going the other way Cock fortunately have got the free they've got it to Sean Potter Potter running through to the D now good bust of speed by him inside to all Max Sweeney it's over hit the pass though and David O'Hanlon the goalkeeper came out from goal and he was able to gather that very very comfortably and saw Carver Costello coming back to gather deep in the fence and Costello sold it from the 45 to the 65 to midfield now and bust forward here here now as he goes up the Dublin number 13 out the left wing he gives it to Kieran Kilkenny Kilkenny trying to angle the run maybe with the left foot now but he decides to reverse back again to his uh, corner forward compatriot Carmo Costello Costello was out 40 out from his own goal he goes back now to Keen Murphy the cornerback one of the new names of the Dublin team he's up to within 40 out from goal then kick passes the ball across the field towards John Small the centre back who's advanced with plenty of space over there Ron Max Sweeney facing him up heading to about 30 metres out from goal now John Small lays the ball off to Ross McGarry who's had a very good league so far from Dublin kicks this one in but he sent it left of the post and wide McGarry has been good for Dublin's so far in this league he scored five points but he didn't get his angle right there and it remains four points to Cork four points to Dublin will Cork be reasonably happy John Fenton Daly Oh well they will when you see the Dublin forwards in particular and the amount of possession or the little possession they have at the moment uh, look Cork have the wind what's it worth look we never know what win how much it's worth but um They've stayed in the game so far. The big danger would be the likes of Conor Callaghan and Dean Rock. You saw when the long ball came in early and, De- and Callaghan caught it direct. Dublin are capable of getting goals. I'm not saying that Cork don't, but Dublin have a lethal danger for goals. And that's what 
look I missed this game but Cork played Mead they conceded three goals I think two of them in the second half so those goals kill, kill games to stay in them Cork need to win this game they need to stay in it but goals are going to count here John Michal Martin with the ball he's 40 out from his own goal now looking for an option as he decides to go on an excursion Alan Niall Morgan into midfield tumble to the ground it's a bit dangerous if possession is turned over Cock needs somebody back to guard the goal but the referee gives the free in favour of the Cock goalkeeper and 50 out from their own goal they have a chance to turn defence into attack they've gone to midfield now because uh, Dublin conceded 13 metres with a bit of descent and there was another bit of an outburst here now with Lee Gannon leaving a loose leg as he was passing the Cock man who was about to take the free referee has the notebook out so there could be another booking a bit of indiscipline Dublin led by 13 points the last day against Limerick at half time Cork were cruising as well the deal was practically done at half time the last day such was the quality of their first half performance it's a very different first half here it's very even by both teams you played almost 20 minutes Cork 4 points a Dublin 4 points here Cork with the breeze and Maris Shanley gives them goal receives the ball and gives it back and makes himself available again doesn't get it because eventually it uh, goes via the right half back Luke Fahey towards Rory Maguire and Rory Maguire goes cross field and Cork will build from the middle of the field again with old Max Tweedy who's been on plenty of ball to knock the green man gives it to Stephen Sherlock who might like to see a bit more of it in an advanced position for throughout the field now trying to solo down the left channel there then lays the ball off the referee has penalised him for steps as he just busts through the line there laid the ball off to Matty Taylor who was within scoring range referee counted the steps free to Dublin yeah and fairness the referee was right up on that John and I'd say he literally did count the steps uh, a lot closer than we were it looked dodgy to me to be honest with you and it was a dangerous ball because he was off the shoulder and he was after breaking into the gap Dublin coming out now every time Dublin attack you get worried about them because they're quality up here on the left here goes Mick Fitzsimons we see him moving into the attack to Kieran Kilkenny over to the corner to Karma Costello Dublin attacking on the left flank now and Costello tried to trade the ball through but good vigilance in defence by Cock they've intercepted that, that they've regained possession with Stephen Sherlock who's way back deep out to Roman Maguire far side of the half back line back to Sherlock again who's only about 30 metres out from his own goal to St Finbar's man and then head up he looks across the field and gets an avenue an outlet for Cock and they're going to break on the right wing with their left half back Matty Taylor the Mallow man we don't often see him coming down the right side right footed it's a brilliant ball inside that's the first time ball inside towards Chris Oak Jones take the couple of players out Jones can give it to him Max Sweeney goal on here it's a goal for Cock made by Chris Oak Jones and scored by Owen Max Sweeney well, there was a brilliant kick pass by Matty Taylor, which is great to see. It opened up the Dublin defence. Chris Oak Jones was very smart off it. He turned provider, and Max Sweeney finished. Cock lead 1 4 to 4 points. Yeah, we spoke about scoring goals, Jan, and uh, our number 14, Chris Oak, got time very unselfish, found Max Sweeney. In fact, Cock had two men in the overlap, and they caught Dublin flat footed there, and that's going to wake Dublin up. It's got a real game on here now. Yeah, ball in the middle of the field is won by Dublin from the kick out as they come up the left flank with. Ross McGarry trying to take on the cock fullback Daniel O'Mani who's trying to keep him away from goal McGarry steps inside with the right boot he kicks a nice point that's his sixth of the league campaign but it's encouraging from a cock point of view the kick pass forward into the inside forward line is causing problems for the Dublin full back line who don't look that organised there uh, well that's what I kept saying from the start John and you know uh, from a Dublin point of view that's a very great morale boost within t- 60 seconds of cock hitting the goal Dublin answer with a point and you know that yourself if you're going to answer a goal with an immediate point it, it breaks the effect of the goal breaks the momentum of it so Dublin are down two but remember Cork if that wind significant wind with the three flags we'll see in the Black Rock in there um, are, 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 are flying in the breeze and they're certainly strong enough wind Cork on the attack here now they're undefended here as far as uh, they're on 45 Yes, yeah, Morris Shanley there again the slower build up but the importance of the change of gears and the vision of the kick pass by Matty Taylor was absolutely superb a few moments ago we've seen it once or twice so far in the game as Cock Luke Fahey bust forward now Brian Hollies having a great game inside the number 13 jersey he's taking on Mick Fitzsimons onto the left boot oh, that's a beauty absolute beauty by Brian Holly. this is superb stuff off the right first and then off the left he was in a foot race with Mick Fitzsimons he beat him he stepped inside off his left and he kicked the ball over the red spot and Cock lead by by one five to five points. That's superb by Holly. Really textbook football. Dublin will break away quickly. Kieran Kilkenny fits the ball up the left hand side of the field. A good aggressive challenge by Tommy Walsh. All the ball went over the sideline, and that's going to be a cock sideline. 30 meters out from their own goal. It's the first meeting since 2016 in the league because at that stage. Cork, there were six meetings in four seasons in the league between 2013 and 2016. Cork won two, Dublin won four. 
Din Kok, of course, were relegated. They drifted from Division 2 to v Division 3. And now they're meeting Dublin in Division 2 in 2023. And they'll be happy enough so far. Kok lead by that really well-taken goal after 23 minutes. It's the Leeds Others 1-5. Dublin, the visitors, 5 points here in Porky Creeve. And the Reds on the attack again over on the left wing. They're sending the ball into the corner to Chris Oak Jones, who's shown up very well, making himself available for the ball. Goes for the score over from the left corner. Right for the it calls the way to the right and it remains as it was divided this game by that goal by Owen Max Sweeney yeah good goal it was a lot of short kick has been taken here now Dublin have played an uncontested short kick out and very nearly Cork uh, intercepted that um, the Cork wing back I think it was um, but um, Cork doing well so far on the Dublin forwards but not a lot of ball coming in yet Daniel O'Man is very very aggressive there but he he did get haven't won it back. Tom Lehiff to Fitzsimons. Flicked inside by Kieran Kilkenny into the right corner. They are looking to try and such out the score. Dean Rock didn't go for it himself because it was a bad angle. So he recycled the ball back out the field to Niles Scully. Inside has gone to Rock again. Rock will keep it going. This could be dangerous now as Dublin tried to get it across the face of the small square here. Into the shooting range. Chance here. Left footed kick and a point for Dublin. That was patient stuff. They just took their time about it. The dubs. They had an opportunity with Rock initially to kick it. Didn't they like to do that? Then the ball came back out again and it was kicked in the end over the bar by number 23, uh, Darren Newcomb. We haven't mentioned, we mentioned him too much in the game but he was up to help the attack there and a can finished by him from inside the 20 metre line it's 1-5 to 6 points at the moment Brian O'Driscoll towards Owen Max Sweeney the two wing forwards within a hand span of one another over at the far side that's the river side of the ground in field towards uh, big figure of Ian Maguire as he sends it to Cantock's Tommy Walsh who's filling the void now at right half back wearing number 4 at the moment but there's plenty of flexibility and plenty of movement around the field the Man occupying the number five jersey, Luke Fahey comes in to help. Then they go to Rory Maguire. We saw his kicking ability early on as he kicked the ball forward for a lovely score uh, for Brian Holly. He's done the same now to open the game up. It's nice to see Cock kicking the ball forward. There's a, a mix and a balance about the team and about the performance so far. They lead by one five to six points on the attack again with Brian O'Driscoll. Into the middle of the field he goes. Back to Maguire. Will he try and break it through towards Colmore Callan, who the great preseason of Callan? No, to Chris Oak Jones in the scoring edge to Matty Taylor off the left foot. The Malaman, this man, this one looks like it's drifting left and wide. It has drifted left and wide, and it remains a two point game here. Uh, Brian Holly scored five points against Dublin here in the 2014 league semi final loss in Croke Park, I should say. So far, Holly certainly proving a tall and decided that that Dublin defense. Uh, three points from play, uh, John, and look, uh, we haven't really seen much of Sherlock, and that's great. Holly and Noel McSweeney has scored 1 1 today. And you know he's a scoring forward, and that's why he he's with Cork. Uh, that was always his um, that was always his calling card was his ability to score. And Cork will need more scoring forwards. Brian O'Driscoll doing well. He hasn't been a scoring threat so far. Chris Old Jones, I feel, has a lot of scoring potential. Only to build up more experience, more confidence. Double on the attack. Yeah, Dublin looking to try and narrow the gap now. 1-5 to 6 at the moment. It's a two-point game. It's going to be picked up by Conor Callan. Hasn't seen a lot of ball in clean space, really. Dublin are going to go back towards Keane Murphy. The cornerback right across field pass, but he picks it up on the 45. The number two makes progress now to the outside of the D. Can he get a point? He's got into the range with the right boot. He kicks it and he's snuck one over. They just stood off him a little bit. The cock defence maybe didn't fancy that the cornerback could find the range. But into the wind, he put his laces through it and he found the range. It's 1-5 to 7 points at the moment. Just a point between them again. In pot minutes before halftime, we've played 27 and a half first half minutes on the weekend that Derry have gone top of the table, remember? On the weekend as well that Kildare got their first point, 16 to 15 against Clare. And Loud came late to the defeat Limerick, 115 to 113. That was very close all the way. And what's going to happen here in Porky Creeve in the final fixture? Next week is Cock against Limerick, Dublin against Clare, Kildare against Derry, and Mead against Loud. Right now, Cock against Dublin is what we're interested in. Cock at the show in motion again, into the middle of the field from Rory Maguire to Colmore Callan of the Aero Club. Out in ovens, right footed again, the kick pass again down the field. This time it was just a little bit high, but Chris Oak Jones did well to claim it ahead of Keane Murphy. Goes in on the right hand side of the field. Murphy didn't get the hand into the challenge. Chris Oak Jones across the face of the square. Is there a chance for a goal? There is a chance for a goal. It's a second cock goal into the back of the net. Now, was it a square ball? Was it a square ball? It's not going to be given. Two cockmen look to be inside it. Maybe. 
It's just a load David O'Hanlon was claiming, and maybe it was a fair call anyway. It was Morris Shanley, the corner back, the number two, ironically, who was up, and he got a fist on, I think, with maybe Brian Hulley as well there. It doesn't count. It's 1 5 to 7 after Chris Oak Jones was impressive again with his approach play. But in coach of a cock point of view, that they created another goal chance. John Small sends the ball out right. Dublin on the attack, only a point between them. This would be a, a bit of a sore turn around if Dublin got a point from this now. Cock aggressively trying to get the foul in, and they have won the ball courtesy of the Dublin man taking too many steps that's good play from a cock point of view game that was probably a fair call though John Chris Oak Jones did very well initially running along along the byline yeah yeah and it was a good move but I'll tell you um, maybe referees I've noticed a slight change um, under the new rule it was almost impossibly cut for a square ball because anyone running in uh, they could be in inside before the ball and it was a very loose rule but I think referees have begun to um, referee it more tightly now and they're, they're watching in case the guy was in there before it and one, maybe two cock players inside before that as uh, Dara Newcomb picks the ball up for Dublin and into Paul Fenton at midfield. We haven't seen that much of him. Right footed, he kicks the ball in. Should be caught up by Daniel O'Mahony, but a good run from behind by the Dublin man. He did really well. That's good, aggressive defending from a cock point of view. Out the field, they get it to Owen Max Sweeney in the left half back roll. He does well as well. The crowd rising to this cock performance because they can see the team playing now with real belief. And again, the kick pass forward inside to Brian Hulley, who has the Dublin defence on toast as he calls to the back and gets it with a kick pass taking out a number of Dublin players again will just stay with it can Hully kick this from the 20 metre line he got one already with the left and he has got a second one it's a dream tactic from a court point of view working so well yeah but you know what John that score is sourced back to Daniel O'Mahony he had no business well he had no right to win that ball he was staying as an extra man as a sweeper but he got to that ball because of his pace and his determination uh, absolutely determined obviously playing with confidence at the moment and those balls are vital and that ended up on the score on the other end Fintan to Kieran Kilkenny to Dean Rock into the corner back to Rock again 25 out from goal back he gives it to Kieran Kilkenny 45 out from goal now 1-6 to 7 Cock leading maybe they could be further ahead we'll see what the right half back Lee Gannon has to say about this as he goes up Lay- the ball off shot comes in from the fast side there is that good it is indeed it's a fine point by the Dublin and it was set up by Lee Gannon and, and kicked between the posts by Conor Callan who came in just on the loop there to kick the ball between the posts Gannon made it or Callan scored it we are back to a one point game after 31 minutes Cork 1-6 Dublin 8 points it's a really enjoyable game of football Owen Max Sweeney is on a lot of ball he's over there at the left half back again at the moment certainly covering a lot of ground Cork with the breeze in the first half they give the ball to Daniel Amani. The breeze is probably an understatement because it is a win now. It's swelling around and heading towards the Black Rock goalers. Rory Maguire, who has been playmaker on a few of these attacks before, tries to get the game moving forward with a bit more pace now. The impressive change of gears by Cock has been good at various stages. Luke Fahey running across, 50 out from goal. Lays the ball back to Sherlock. Sherlock tries to step inside the challenge of Niall Scully. Goes for a score from distance. It won't be his 19 point of the season it goes left and wide a few more might have sailed over that one went left and wide it remains 1-6-8 yeah this is his second shot John and you know I have to say he's a bit off colour now um, look I'm not complaining because Brian Hurley's receiving a lot of ball Owen McSqueen is very dangerous in there Chris Oak Jones hasn't got a lot in the scoreboard hasn't got anything in the scoreboard yet John but watch it he's playing well and I'll give him um, I'll give him a big score I compliment him on his performance but look at Dublin running off the ball it's top class Kieran Kilkenny to Keane Murphy we know he got a point the last time he was up to Dean Rock in the top of the left position trying to guide it over with the side foot it's a lovely score really well made by Keane Murphy to pass into the path of Rock and he calmly popped the ball over the bar from the top of the left position gently does it from a Dublin point of view that was a cool calm finish uh, John ominous here now Dublin with a lot less possession I imagine the stats will tell us that less possession less territory and yet he flighted that ball over the bar so easily but did you see the fast transition the way they walked the ball to the runner down the flank and they're able to kick those scores into the wind and that was difficult they'll do more of them John in the second half if they have more ball so Cork need to be at least where they are and probably could do it they could have done with that this allowed goal I can tell you it's all square on the Porky Creeve scoreboard after 33 first half minutes. It's uh, 1 6 to the Rebels and 9 points to the Dubs and plenty of Dubs around the place. Now, Cock fans, though, here in numbers as well, which is encouraging to see as they try and go and set up something to take to the judgment with Ian Maguire charging forward. 45 out from the goal now into the shooting range. He has all Max Sweeney. 1 1 already for him. Can he make it? 1 2 just marginally left and wide with his kicking from distance today. Owen Max Sweeney, and that's encouraging, and he's having a really good first half for the Rebels Cock beat Dublin I said 
115 to 16 points in a tight game in Parky Rain back in 2015. It's tight here at the moment. Tom Lehef goes forward. Out he gives it to Kieran Kilkenny. Popping up now on the 20 metre line on the left hand side of this latest Dublin attack. He fists the ball back towards Nice Scully, the Dublin right half forward. Into the centre back, John Small. And Small keeps it going over the far side to Lee Gannon, who was provider of a one a few moments ago. Rock is taught, thinking about scoring, but he's a long way out to go for it, really, out near the sideline. So he gives it back to Mick Fitzsimons. The number four is up 45 out from goal. Gives it off towards Nice Scully. Inside now to the centre back, John Small, with a chance of his first one of the day. Nice build up by Dublin but it didn't finish with a score with a minute remaining plus whatever will be added on at the end of this half of stoppage time yeah and to the brave effort by Small but I count the cock at six wides Dublin have only four and uh, there's a minute to half time again an uncontested shot kick out double cock on the attack Fahey here is another fellow getting good experience and he's going for that long ball yes yeah, a good searching delivery inside if we have a runner and cock have a runner Chris Old Jones is out to meet it again great work by him now he has possession 40 out from goal trying to take on Keane Murphy gives it to Brian O'Driscoll chance passes across the half hour line back it gives to Sherlock this could be the moment for Stephen Sherlock they have read out just a little bit out there after good approach play. but one more time Chris Old Jones showing his ability to cover right across that inside forward line he's running right and left running into pockets of space winning possession he's in a really energetic first half yeah and John listen we have a long way to go in this season but I'll tell you it's a, it, this is the beginning for Chris Oak Jones in my view he's going to become a cock scoring forward I can see it in him you know it from club level he has a bit of experience and confidence that they back him because he's a quality forward a very good player a very aware and very mobile well, Dublin on the attack, it's all square. Cock don't deserve to go in behind at halftime, but Dublin on the attack, the, the attack trying to get what would be a lead score with Lee Gannon over into the corner. They're trying to work the ball back around towards Ross McGarry. Chance now for the dubs. It's with now Niles Scully. Can he engin- engineer something? It's gone in and between the posts. It's a Dublin point, and they do lead by a point, and that's probably harsh lines on Cock. There's a minute of stoppage time to be added on. 30 seconds of that have been played. Cock have played most of the football, created a number of goal scoring opportunities have scored one goal have more wides than Dublin but crucially have been aided by the wind in the first half they trail by 10 points to one goal and six and Rory Maguire who's had a solid match at centre back to Tommy Walsh now Walsh will go forward can Cox seek out an equalising score before the break Ian Maguire goes forward with a whistler sound that they won't get it probably harsh lines than what we've seen so far but Dublin I'm sure will go in feeling now that they have the winning of this game within their compass in the second half and it's a, listen it's a very good test for Dublin coming down here playing a, a team as you say we haven't played them in the league for quite a while for 6-7 years they love the idea of coming here they love being challenged they're leading a game John where you would say on paper they shouldn't be Ter- territory and possession have been in Cox's favours but it's all about kicking the ball over the bar and while Cox in the first quarter for now were very reluctant to play the inside ball we saw how effective it was especially with Brian Hurley once they did that and one of those inside balls to Chris Oak Jones who was by the way one of my favourite players in the first half gave the pass to 